Okay, so in the last video, we looked at naming the alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, uh, and then various uh, other hydrocarbons containing oxygen, so alcohols, ketones, aldehydes, uh, and so on. Today, we're going to look at how we name hydrocarbons that contain nitrogen. Okay, so we're going to start uh, with nitriles. Nitriles are when we see the group in a compound C triple bonded to an N. And they're actually the probably the easiest of, of all of the naming things that we're going to learn because you just add the word nitrile onto the end of a compound. Um, for example, uh, we can look at eth ethane nitrile which is just an ethane with one of the carbons as a nitrile. Okay, or we can look at uh, any other ones, propane, nitrile, so C, doing the full structural formulas here. Okay, so you can see that the naming convention is just adding, it's a little strange compared to the other ones because we're just literally adding the word nitrile onto the end of the original name to make propane nitrile, ethane nitrile, so on and so on. Uh, prefixes for these still work how they always would. Uh, if we wanted to draw these in skeletal form, so this first one we would have our carbon, our carbon triple bond, nitrogen. Here are three carbons. This last one is triple bonded to a nitrogen. Again, triple bonds are going to be uh, linear bonds, so we draw them straight off of each other. So the next nitrogen containing compound, which is three of them we have to examine, the next one are amines. Okay, amines we've seen uh, a lot before. These are when we have an N group, so let's say an NH2 group, or it might be uh, an N with one carbon group and one hydrogen, or it could be a nitrogen with two different carbon groups attached to some main chain. Okay, so these are what we call uh, amines. So we actually have three different classifications of amines, depending on how many carbons are attached to the nitrogen. So if there's one carbon, it's a primary amine, two carbons is a secondary, and three carbons is a tertiary amine. And the naming convention changes a, a little bit for each one. So let's start by looking at some of the primary amines. So for these, uh, first example we'll do is the simplest of all the amines. So we use our root word, we're going to use meth and an because there's no double bonds, and we add to the end amine. So methanamine okay, would be a methane with an NH2 group. Um, we could have for example, propanamine. Which would be a propane with an NH2 group. Now in this case, we could also have two propanamine or propan two amine to be more appropriate uh, if the nitrogen was off of the second carbon. So just like other functional groups, uh, the amines are, are, are the same naming conventions. If we have branch chains, we would add prefixes to the beginning. If it's on a different carbon, uh, we would number that carbon. Okay, so those are some examples of, of primary amines. For secondary amines, okay, we have to add a little bit more to the name because where there's multiple carbons, we have to know where uh, or which one we have to distinguish our main chain carbon versus additional carbons attached to the nitrogens. Um, so, for example, let's say there is uh, we have one 
with a nitrogen and it's attached to a hydrogen, a methyl group, so CH3, and an ethyl, CH2, CH3. So this one, again, we start where we would previously, and we look for our longest carbon chain, which is here, or our ethyl group. So that means our root word is going to be ethanamine. Okay, but now we have to also distinguish because we have a methyl group here. So normally when we have a branching group, in this case the methyl, we would put one methyl, two methyl, depending on which carbon it comes off of the main chain. But in this case, it's not coming off of the main chain, it's coming off of the nitrogen. So instead of writing a number, we put N and treat N like a number. So we put a dash afterwards and we put N methyl. So this would be N methyl ethanamine. Okay, another, uh, let's do another example here. So I'll write down the name first and we'll try to draw it. So let's do N ethyl propanamine. Here we go. N ethyl propanamine. Okay, so the first thing is we start with our nitrogen. Okay, we're going to have a hydrogen. We are dealing with a secondary here. So we have one ethyl group coming off. I'll draw the skeletal structure, so two carbons. Carbon one, carbon two. And we have a propane group coming off. One, two, three. So this would be our structure for N-ethyl propanamine, or a secondary um, amine. Finally, we have tertiary amines, which are when we have a nitrogen with three different groups attached. Okay, sometimes those groups can be the same, uh, in which case we use our, our di and tri prefixes added in. So for example here, how about a nitrogen with a CH3, a CH2, CH3, so an ethyl group, and a methyl group. So if we want to name this one, again, we start by finding our longest carbon chain, which is our ethane. This becomes our root word, which we saw before is ethanamine. Okay, and then we go and we look for our branching chains. In this case, we have a, a CH3 and another CH3. So with our two methyls, make sure I'm on green here, there we go. Um, we have two, so we have to name it dimethyl, and both are coming off of the nitrogen. So like when we do numbers, we will call it N, N, di, run out of the room, dimethyl ethanamine. Okay, if for instance, uh, in this tertiary amine, if we had two ethyl groups and one methyl, then we would call it N-methyl diethanamine because there would be two of our our main grouping chain uh, so we just distinguish that there's two by saying the die in front of whatever group it is uh, so the last piece so this is a means um, yeah and the last one that we're going to look at is amides which are similar to carboxylic acids except instead of the alcohol group or the OH on the end of the carboxylic acid, we have an NH2 group, an amide. And this is when we have a group that looks like C, double bonded to an oxygen, and then attached to a nitrogen. Um, again, we can have primary, secondary, and tertiary amides as well, since we do have that nitrogen that can have different amount of carbons on it. Um, and they are named similarly to how we name amines, except instead of the ending of the word being amine, it's going to be amide. So we'll look at one example of each. So we'll look at a primary amide, a secondary, and a tertiary. So for a primary one, um, we're going to look at butanamide. So butanamide, which would be four carbons. I'm going to draw this again as the as a skeletal structure, so we need to get used to them. So one, two, three, four. 
one, two, three, four. Oxygen and our NH2 group. It's a primary since it's only connected to one carbon. And in fact, I should reverse the numbering on this because we would want our functional group, our, our amide here, to be on the lowest number carbon. So we would actually put it one, two, three, four. Um, if we were to say add a methyl on here on carbon three, then it would become three methyl uh, butana, uh, butan one amide. Okay, so that's our primary. We can have secondary. Um, so for the secondary one, we might have, for example, N methyl uh, propanamide. So N methyl propanamide, uh, in which case our, our root word here is propane, which is three. So one, two, three carbons to our nitrogen, oxygen. So here's our carbons again. We'll label it backwards. So one, two, three. Um, and our nitrogen would have to be attached to one hydrogen and a methyl group. So CH3. Or we could have, finally, a tertiary. Um, such as N, N, uh, ethyl, methyl, propanamide. Um, so this one now would again be propanamide, so the same shape as the previous one with our three carbons, one, two, three. And we would have our nitrogen, but now we have two groups coming off. We have a methyl group and we have a ethyl group of two carbons. I suppose I can draw these ones as well. Just drawing one line coming off would represent our methyl group, which drawing the skeletal structure would be the proper way to do it. Here we go. So three examples of primary, secondary, and tertiary amides. Okay, so we're just going to take a look at two more quick naming conventions that you may come across, and that's cyclic compounds and benzene-containing compounds. For cyclic uh, hydrocarbons, this is simply when our main chain of hydrocarbons uh, connects back on itself. So for example, let's say we have a hexane, okay, which contains six carbons. But instead of them going out in a chain, we actually have our six carbons in a ring shape. So the chain connects on itself. This would be our main group. So everything would be named based off of this cycle, become the root word. Um, and we would change the name in this case to, you know, normally a six carbon chain would be hexane. So with a six carbon chain in a ring, we would call it cyclohexane. Now, again, all the other naming conventions still apply to this, um, and we can draw cyclohexane in a skeletal structure, saving a lot of time as such. So this is cyclohexane. We could have, for uh, a couple of examples here, cyclohexene, if we happen to have a double bond in it. So cyclohexene, we would draw our six-member ring and then add in one double bond. Okay, you could have cyclohex, uh, sorry, cyclohexadiene if we had two double bonds in there, or so on and so on. You could have, uh, let's say, one, two, dimethyl, cyclobutane, since it's butane, cyclobutane is going to be four carbons. So we would actually have a square. Now, which ones are carbon one and two? So we know one and two, they're going to be next to each other. So we put a methyl group here, and we put another methyl group here coming off uh, carbons one and two. Since it's a cycle, we just start our lowest number carbon wherever our first group starts that puts the rest of the groups on the lowest one. 
Uh, we could have two groups coming off the same carbon, we could have one on different. Uh, you can have alcohol groups, you can have uh, ketones. Now, with a chain, though, or with a cycle, sorry, you cannot have, for example, a carboxylic acid or an amide because there is no end of the, of the chain to put that functional group on. And the final type of compound we'll learn how to name uh, are compounds that contain benzene. Now, benzene, uh, we say that they have, uh, or that we call them aromatic compounds, and that word comes from aromatic or aroma, literally to smell, because often when compounds contain uh, benzene, they do have a, a pungent odor to them, um, some being very nice, some being very harsh and strong. So they're aromatic compounds. And we say when a compound contains a benzene that it contains a phenyl functional group. Okay, so just like we have an alcohol functional group, a, something with a benzene would be a phenyl functional group. Uh, this is just gonna be a very quick section on naming benzene compounds because we are gonna do a larger portion on, on benzene in this unit. Just a little quick introduction. So benzene, again, you probably remember is when we have six carbons in a ring, but each carbon, every second carbon has a double bond connected to it. And this would have a resonance structure. Since there's a double bond connected to every second carbon, each carbon can only have one additional hydrogen on it. So this is our benzene ring. And this is the simplest form of benzene uh, in a skeletal structure which is how we normally draw benzenes. We have our six-membered ring, or you'll sometimes see it drawn with a full circle in the middle to represent that resonance structure. Um, we can add substituents to benzene, just like we would any other group. We can add methyls, we can add chloros. Um, so two special examples though, which I'm going to show you right now, are if we have a benzene and just because these have special names to them or common names. So a benzene with one methyl group on it, we can call this benzene being our root, methyl benzene. Um, but it also has the common name toluene. Okay, and the other one that has a common name, or Sorry, no, uh, another one you'll see commonly is when you have an alcohol group. So when you have OH. Uh, now this has, th there are again multiple naming conventions to these things. When we have an alcohol group as a branching group, we can add the word hydroxy in front and call this hydroxybenzene or we can treat the alcohol as our main group and the benzene as our functional group, in which case uh, we would call put the alcohol at the end of the word as our suffix, and we would call this more commonly phenol. So just two of the common benzene ones you come across, but again, there's many, many others. We can have, for example, um, let's have one, three dichloro, benzene. So we would have our benzene here. Since all carbons are equivalent, just pick one to be carbon one. I'll take this one and put my chlorine on. Now you can put, you can either go left or right around the circle because it's the same in both directions. I'm going to go to the right. We'll call this carbon three. So that would be one three dichlorobenzene. Um, and this brings us to the end of a very brief yet long introduction to organic naming. So this is the backbone uh, of everything that we need to do further on in the organic chapter.